overview of what the yeah. monitors and CIC does, and then if you have further questions that I can't answer and our books can't answer, then I can find out the rest of the answers for you. So I guess to start off, do you have any pressing major questions, or should you would you like me to just start and do an overview for you? Overview. All right. So we'll take a look at the monitor here. So obviously you guys can see all of your patients that are there, all the patients that are in the boxes that say discharge means that it's a bed that's locked, so it's already been a reserve for a room. Um, any new patient you have, you'd go to the admit, which this one down here in the corner is open and available to admit. Um, as you know, all of the alarms come up in the top left-hand corner. Um, the color of the alarms depends on the severity of the alarm. So yellow would be a warning and red would be a crisis. Um, you know that you can change the amount of beds you see on the screen compared to how many patients you have? Okay. So that means... So right now, if you want to just the patients that are actually assigned to the calendar, on there as opposed to every monitor or every EG. bed that EG. you possibly have available, you can change it so... Only the active beds are showing. So like on this screen we would only have five five strips running as opposed to all of them that are on So if you come up to here and do auto display, ooh, well that doesn't look good. All right, we'll have to look into that one. You should be able to click auto display and it'll only show your current patients so you don't have all these empty boxes in the middle. I'll figure out why it doesn't say that now. Um, you know that an event marker, if someone presses it on a transmitter, it changes color and shows up on the central station. You can also go back in the history and trends and find that event. Um, if you need to change the alarms, you can silence an alarm. It's a one minute silence on all of the alarms, and the new alarms will break through the silence, so you don't have to worry that you're silencing an alarm that hasn't happened yet. Um, let's see, to go to a patient's menu, all you do is click on that particular patient and it'll bring up all of the extra things you can do to the patient, look at the patient, all their additional waveforms. You can also change what waveforms you look at on the patient. So if you wanted to see a different lead wire, you right click on the patient and change and see lead one, lead three, um, anything that you wanted. You can also um, change the color of them, which clearly you've been able to be skilled enough to do on your own. Did you know that? No? Do you want to do it? Nights made of red, white, and blue. Come on, want to do it? Can <laughs> yeah, you, you can it? try it out. Go ahead. Sure. Okay. Yeah, get the camera. <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> oh. All right, so what do I do? So if you click a patient, that, preferably an active patient that's there, and you right-click on their... Just anywhere? Yeah. Just right-click? You should be able to select what waveforms you see. So... You can select waveform one, the color. You can also select waveform number two, and it'll tell you what secondary lead you want to see. Oh. Oh, can I change the color? Go for you can it. Make it hot pink. Go ahead. Oh, make it whatever yeah. color you want. <laughs> Some hospitals right, so tend to do. If you're watching patients from a lot of different floors, you know Look at that. every patient that Good comes job. up in pink yeah. is on the care one floor. Or every patient that has a pacemaker is in orange or so certain places have different codes for their patients so you know what you're looking at. Also an asterisk at the top of the patients means they're telemetry patients. It looks like all of these patients are telemetry patients that you're watching. So how, how would I now get out of that? Do I left click? Uh, try left clicking. Okay. Um, does everyone know how to admit a patient to the central station? Marcy, you show. Yes. Walk through? Yeah, let's, let's walk through it. Just make sure. So, you go through that, and you put just the initial of the last name, the first full name, 
then you go down to the EKG and you just check off which box you're using. Yep. Then you press submit and then you press out. There you go. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. yep. Very good job. Good job. It's exactly what you what you <laughs> need to know. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, do you, oh look at that. Yeah. Do you also at me. Do you also know how to discharge a patient? Yes, no. Since you were such a great demonstrator before, would you like to go again? <laughs> so come down to admit. Can we get a light check, please, in 300? Uh, well, if you were on a patient that was oh, here, the discharge. Right there, but so if you were on a patient that was here, the discharge will be. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Then so you can't discharge a patient. Can't discharge a patient. Not not a patient. Well, I'm not going to do it, but then you would discharge. And then save. And, and then save, and you get out. Okay, now before you discharge, do you guys have any processes or procedures that you need to do before you discharge a patient? Like, like printing graphs or no. saving trends? Okay. Just to make sure you're aware, which you probably are, once you discharge a patient, the memory goes away. So you can't go back in and find their history from two hours ago or five minutes ago. So before you guys discharge, just make sure that you have all the data and information and printed whatever you need beforehand. Because you can't go back and get it. Okay? Unless you're sending to a medical record, which I know is in the talks at some point, but it's not currently happening. Okay. You don't currently have any other monitors with the telemetry patients, right? Like a combo monitoring system? No. Where you'd be on a bedside monitor and then telemetry. Mm -hmm. Skip that section nope. then. All right. Do you guys know how to see what's going on real time with the patients? You know, beat to beat waveforms. Do you want to zoom in and see what's really happening? Or events or trends? Do you know how to see more waveforms for a patient? Or John has a short video. I have it. I haven't done it that much. You click on a box, right? Mm-hmm. And then it comes up. Pretty easy. So where, what did you do? Did you right click? Did you no, no, not right clicking. Left click on the box that you want to look at. Mm -hmm. Now, you know that if a patient maybe has been in, I don't know, was bathing or something like this, or you think that their ECG waveform is reading incorrectly, the way the monitor does it is it learns what's normal for this patient and then every other ECG waveform after that compares to the patient's normal. So if you think that it's not reading correctly, you might want to relearn what it is. So it's basically a stencil. It takes the first 14 seconds of good ECG data and then after that it always will compare back to those first 14 seconds as a giant stencil. That's kind of how the ECG works. So if you don't think that it's reading correctly or stenciling correctly, you just click on this button, relearn, and it would relearn the patient's rhythm and say, okay, we need to relearn how their current ECG is. I know I'm probably reviewing things you already know. Well, the, the, these two know, but Celine and I have okay. so. So if any patient has a significant change in rhythm or rate and you really want a new normal to be compared to, that's when you would click the relearn button. Does that make sense? Why you would do it and when? No. Remember that, um, that strip you showed me earlier when you were asking, you know, would you put this in sinus even though it looks funky and I told you it was probably just a lot of artifacts in addition to. Okay. So you can click relearn and get a better tracing, or hopefully a better tracing in that. Right, because if it essentially creates a stencil of really bad artifact for 14 seconds, 
the next 10 seconds, next hour, it's always going to compare back to those really bad 14 seconds and say, well, it's kind of normal compared to this, or it'll look or maybe a lot because it's not like the original 14 seconds. So that's really the difference, and that's what the relearning does. Um, I also, in the book, just so you guys, if you have any questions about ECG lead placement and lead wires, on. There's a picture, I'm assuming you've had a lot of training on electrodes and wash on the area of the skin, prep it properly for a good electrode. If you're getting a bad tracing, oftentimes it's the electrodes and maybe it just needs a new one or things like that. So something is a first line of defense even if you call GE's help desk. They'll tell you first, please change all the electrodes because a dry electrode will just give a bad tracing. And will alarm a lot. It'll alarm a lot and you'll get a lot of false okay. alarms and we don't want you guys to get desensitized by a lot of alarms here. Unnecessarily at least. Um, okay, now do you are you familiar with how to change a parameter for a patient, like an alarm parameter? Do I go here? Mm -hmm. alarm control. So these are ones that cannot be changed at all. Right. Did you right click on that? No. No, left. No. So you can change anything, huh, but your price is alone. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. And I have in this book, just so you can always be referenced, what the alarms are. It'll tell you right here, a crisis, a warning, advisory, and message, just so you know what those mean, mm -hmm. what they sound like. And so you're very well aware, all of the alarms that were really important are preset in there that are dangerous, like no, do not change. Don't worry that you're going to be changing those, because those should be password protected defaults, you can't get in there to change them. So if a patient keeps alarming on, you know, one beat over and it just, you just keep knowing that it's normal for them but they alarm every couple of minutes because that's the way the monitor set up, you can go in there and change and say, okay, well, instead of alarming it, you know, FPO2 of 88 or 90, we'll change it to 89 so we don't stop mm -hmm. hearing the same repetitive alarm over and over. Or a heart rate. Or a heart rate, exactly. Okay. So you would click here, Ma, say, right here. In this box where it says the level of the alarm warning. Okay. And then you click on the drop down box and change it to what you want. Okay. Say you have a patient that keeps going into, you know, couplets or yeah, maybe PVCs or things like that that are too high of a warning now. And you don't need, maybe for all your other patients you want to know if they're going into any of these dysrhythmias, but on this one patient you know who's doing it all day and you know the doctor's aware of it and you know it's part of them, you can so change it, it so you right don't get alarmed every five seconds. It would be on this side here mm -hmm. for the parameter limits. Yep, and then here, you know, exactly. You change it here, correct. Exactly. So if your heart rate for this one patient just keeps alarming because it's set at, you know, 150, and this guy always is at 151 and it's normal, you can change it to 152, and then it'll only notify you when you hit 152 instead of every time he hits 150. So this is a way to make it a little bit quieter on the floors. Gives you guys control. They're your patients. You know what's going on with them. So you should be empowered to be able to change these alarms. You're only helping yourself and the patient by changing their alarm limits. So I don't want you guys to be afraid that you're going to change them and miss something. Um, pacemakers. Do you guys have a lot of pacemaker patients? Do you we have know, some. Do you know how to turn pace detection on? So if you go back to ECG, you see you've detected pace. So you can choose pace one or pace two. The difference between them is best described. I'll just leave this for you guys to read. It has right in here 
PACE 2 is a normal detection mode, PACE 1 is an alternate one. Um, it goes into pretty clinically what the differences are between PACE 1 and PACE 2. Um, it deals with the QRS complexes and spikes. So I'm going to leave these for you guys. So you, if you have questions, because you won't remember it now anyways if I tell you. And so it's best described though. In here. Now, SPO2, are you getting any SPO2 on your telemetry right now? No. Okay. Well, you can, and if and when you want to, we can discuss the, you know, it's a plug-in cable that clicks on their finger, and then you can get SPO2 readings on all of this as well as the graphs and trends. And that would be right under here, and that's... If you ha were getting the readings, you'd have a menu where you can also change their limits and things like that there. Any questions so far? No? Okay. All right. Alarm structure, we've talked about somewhat. Um, just so you know, in this book, there's also right here on these pages, um, a list of what all the alarm things will be. So if it comes up and you don't know what that means, it says no calm or something on the top of the monitor, it'll tell you, it, it's just like your car, if some bell goes off and you've never seen it before, this will tell you what's happening and what it means. So that way you guys can reference it and know exactly what's going on. Um, like I said, the all alarm pause, you should be able to see a bell that looks like that on him. Um, now we discussed adjusting alarm settings. Do you feel comfortable with that? Okay. Can you, Questions? Um, can you review the historical data? Yes. Or am I ahead of you? No. Nope. You're perfect. All right. So, on... If you want to change the way you can graph a patient, if you click on whatever patient you want, there should be a graph setup button right there. And there you can see what you would want on your um, graphing if you printed it out. So you can change what lead wave forms you get, how many you get. And then those are the graph locations. Those are just what printer you can use. That's whatever you guys have called those printers. Oh, there you go. So that's how you print. Now, to view a patient's full disclosure, the beat-to-beat -beat waveforms of what's going on. Do you know how to find those? Try main menu. What is that? see on that. Right down there. There we go. So now you can go back and see the full disclosure. So FD stands for full disclosure. That's your beat to beat waveforms of what's been going on. So if you click on it on the full disclosure page, you can try that one first. And then you can go back in time. You should be able to with the cursor up there, go up and see what was happening before. And then once you click on a strip, you can also move left and right. Maybe not. Well, maybe this way. Can you thought so, but it might be. Oh, there you go. So by clicking there, you can move left and right down the strip so you can see exactly what's going on. You can print those strips. You can see the trends of what happened. Um, let's see. The print button right at... So if I wanted to print this, I would go here to the print button? You would, but I don't know why it's, it's right up. out. 
Do you guys have a big printer? Like a laser printer like you'd have at home? It goes to here. It goes here, yeah. that's all. Hmm. Okay. We'll have to talk about that. Can you also set up it to print on a laser on a printer? Laser? Okay. So then you get a whole page of graphic trends and things like that. So you don't only have the little strips. If that's something worthwhile okay. to you. I've seen that before downstairs. I see who does it. Print a full page. Okay. Um... Customizing the full disclosure page on where are we? <laughs> so how far does this go back? Like It'll go forever. Depends on the software on the Monitor, I believe this one, you guys have licensed up to 24 hours, but we can test it if this patient's been here longer than a day. It'll go 24, 48, or 72 hours back through the data. So it stores everything that... That's it. So July 2nd at 1036. What's today? No. Did they get admitted today? No. Who was it? 11B. He's been here. Hmm. Okay. You should have at least 24 hours of waveforms. So, unless he was discharged and readmitted onto a different transmitter, we'll have to look into that. But you should be able to see everything for at least 24 hours on here. Somebody should get after them. Um, what else? Printing reports, viewing. Um, are you familiar with the graphic trends button? Okay. So you can go through and select. Yeah, this one will scroll now. But it should be able to scroll. Oh, you can change the scale. Oh, yep, oh, yeah. there you go. So if you change that and do, you know, 15 minutes or something, you'll change your graph on completely. So you can change it based on how many hours of information you have and you want to see and what's important. It do you also use has. That? You do. It also has the event summary on the side, so it'll tell you any events that happened during that time frame. So right here. Mm -hmm. So if you had had any, yeah, any events and you can see what was going on. The green's hard to read, huh? It is. Mm. Can you print these graphic trends on the strip printer? Yeah. Not the graphic trends. Okay. Oh, well, the more printer, the pr it is coming? It's coming. It is printed. Huh. <coughs> the printer yeah. buttons were lit up graphic right trends. here. Graphic yeah. trends. So it will give you a small graph without the strip printer, or without the laser printer. So, if you want, you can also, um, you can click another patient that might have different data and see what their graphic trends look like. So you go. You can, did you see on the bottom, you can change what range of interval you want on the graph. So if you want it by the hour, or by every 15, minutes, how many, how big or small right, yeah. data point you want on your graph. So, so if you want it like two hours or last hour. So the trends just really help you can see if there's a major change in the patient's stability in a quick look without having to read all the numbers. And then if you press they that They just arrow, opened it up when we started. It, yep. They just opened it up when we started. It has another one. It has the air. Now if you want to see all the vital signs that they've had, you can click on vital signs. There you go. And it should have them on listed for you, you can change what interval they have. So if you want heart rate, not at every five minutes, but every 15 minutes, it's down on the bottom left. So you can see 
depends what type of charts, what paperwork you need to fill out, things like that. If you had the other monitors connected to the telemetry box, you would also get um, NIBP and SPO2 in temperature through onto here if that's something you needed so you didn't have to hand write it down and then type it in later if that's how your system workflow works now. Um, you should be able to print your vital signs also, so if you need to know. Now calipers, I don't know if you use the calipers at all or not, but you found it. <laughs> Thankfully they're not hard to find, right? The buttons hopefully are supposed to be easy. Um, so you can go and you can select what ECG strip you want. Um, oops, so I think we're in the wrong time frame is what it's saying. So we'd have to go... Can you move the arrow up, maybe? I don't know where your waveform is. Why don't we just X out of here? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go for a new one. I'm not sure. Can anybody go to lunch? Patient uh. data. Alright, calipers. Why does it keep saying that? I don't know. That is a good question. Yeah. Yeah. It's never said there that it before. Yeah. I wonder why your strip, your waveform's not coming up, though. Are you guys watching lead two? Is that the lead? Huh. Usually we get a quick example. Like, if you're wanting to do your measurements right then and there, you grab a quick example if you're getting a good tracing, mm -hmm. and use that example as what you would pull up for your calipers. Yeah. Or if you've had any events from the past, then... You want to use, use the calipers on. Right, you can use that, too. Maybe we can try that if you click patient data again. Calipers. And try maybe events on the right. Huh. Can you select one of the events on the side maybe? And then try calipers. See if that works. There you go. And then... So how would we get just this? In, you know what I mean? <clears throat> like what we're seeing here, how can we use the calipers for that? Because I've seen, we've done that before, didn't we? That's yeah. the part where you just take a quick tracing. So if, um, if you go, if you go back, or if you take, like, um, go up here. take a sample and now right now it's taking the tracing mm -hmm. so you let it go for a few minutes okay. if you cancel that part like if you click it again it'll stop the tracing mm -hmm. and then you can go back into patient data and then if you go to event your first one will be the Thank sample you. you just took and then you can sample it there we go. Thank you. Welcome. Sorry. You, no, you need the better view than I do. <laughs> no, see what it's saying here? The display waveform no, no longer exists. Did you stop the tracing, though, no. at the time? That's the thing. That's why. So it's still tracing. Okay. Let me just do it again one more time. Click on here, all right? Let me want a sample. Yeah. Sometimes you have to let it go for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And then click it again to stop it. Yep. And then if you go over to your event, you sample. The top one? Top one, yeah. Try the first one. 
Calvin's right there now. Calvin needs a minute to think about it. Sometimes the calipers are just hidden further down if you scroll up and down. You know, you can, if you click on the gray boxes, you should be able to drag the sizes of the calipers. Measure exactly what mm -hmm. you're looking to measure. And you want to put it down. Can I help you? Yeah. Might need to scroll down a little bit if you're not going further. <laughs> Very slow. There you go. Just this in to measure like a PR, put it on the P and then the R. And then that to the, yeah. Okay. Thank you. She's downstairs. There you go. So you guys should also be able to um, She's print it still down there. if you want. 17. No, you'll need a laser oh, printer for that then. Mm -hmm. um, Putting in the middle. Her procedure paper, and I'm like, I never, I never saw her. She just went downstairs. Which part apply? Are you apply? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, okay. she kept getting pushed and then back you go. And back and back. Yeah. You do the rest, right? She didn't finish her prep. Yes. So if you go and oh, really? you hit apply, well, that's why we don't have a job. I'm like, I must have missed it because they ever oh, mocked yeah. up for recovery as having been yep. done. And, and then you go to do your QRS. Thank you, John. Okay. And then it saves it. You see, oh, it's up okay. there, so it'll remember what value it is. Right. And you can clear them if it's not actual. Mm -hmm. So you can always, you don't have to write them down to remember. Sure. Sorry. No, sorry. Okay. Let's see. That's more or less the majority of what I've got for you in life. Yeah. Um, just you know, there's also a troubleshooting part in the book here. So if something's going wrong and you can't figure out why it's not alarming right or working right, there's a frequently asked questions, often issues, problems, things like that right on the back. And then how to clean it. You guys know how to cleaning protocols and things like that.